Welcome back to What Are T Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the M44, the tier 6 American SPG, which was kind of ruined by Wargaming because it was one of the best vehicles in the game, but unfortunately they adjusted it. This one is located on the southwest spawn of Province and it's under the command of Clone Trooper of the ASUS clan. Game on! It's based on the hull of a Radley's uh, uh, Walters. Yes, it is a Radley Walters, actually. Um, they built 250 of them. Originally, they actually had problems with the fumes because they actually had a covered top and the fumes were being retained inside. It's got a 155mm howitzer mounted in a swivel turret. Now, before it was uh, ruined, it was 550 Alpha. Now it's 500 Alpha. Waiting for it. No, he's decided not to shoot at the AMX 12 ton. His fellow RT in the game is an AMX 13 F3, and I don't know if you've noticed it, but somebody tried to counter battery that RT. So it looks like um, Clone Trooper might have to move after he fires each time because, yes, there's a good chance the enemy might try to get him. Well, we just saw an enemy tank get taken out. The MT-25. And I warned him. I did warn him. I mean, unfortunately, he can't hear me. But the fact of the matter is, I saw what happened. And I reckoned that there had to be a shot from the enemy RT to counter-battery him. And he's lost 99 hit points there to a Hummel. So it looks like both of the enemy RT or maybe just one of them, is actually trying to counter battery. The AMX 13 F3 on our team has taken the hint and he's relocating. We fired our round and now we're re relocating to avoid getting hit. Does look like the enemy is trying counter battery. Okay, we've got an OI. So enemy RT inbound. Did I hear a rumble of an RT round? Nope, not yet. Rounds out on the OI. Oh! It hit, but it didn't do any damage whatsoever. No, he'll have to change position again. Oh, he did get some damage on the track. So at least there's something there. In fact, he damaged the track on the AMX 12 ton, I think. Okay, he's going to go for another shot. Difficult one here on the AMX 12 ton, but he's only one hit point. So he can get a kill. Oh, he didn't. So it went to the corner. And he's changing position again. Okay, he's noticed there's an M4A3E8. A little further up the field on this side of the map. So he's putting back. There's a T3485M. And yeah, there's the target over on the other side of the battlefield. Rounds out. Goes long. He's not having a lot of luck at the moment, Clone Trooper. He does have some assist, but really it's down to the fact that uh, his uh, the enemy is actually seems to be getting some good shots in. Okay. Unfortunately, oh! Well, he did get the stack count, but now he needs to change position quickly before he gets counter battery. So he got his first kill, but he hasn't moved. The worry is, of course, the enemy might try to counter. Oh, the AMX 12 ton just died. And that was the AMX 13 F3 that got the kill. He moves further up to actually get a better shot, a better angle. So we're going for the OI. Rounds out. Could be a kill. No, it went too long. The guy's only got 30 hit points left, but he is definitely a one shot. KV1S has just turned up. He's a little healthier. But I think, yeah, there you go. It's the AMX 13 F3 again got a direct angle on that target 
And I don't know if you've noticed this guy sitting down in the valley, but I spotted him on the mini map. And well, he's a Skoda T25, and now he's a wreck because that was a very accurate shot. Well done, Clone Trooper. That's his second kill of the game. Now, unfortunately, he didn't get the kill on that OI because he was taken out by somebody else. I suspect it might be the AMX 13F3 because he does have a large number of kills at the moment. He's got two kills at the moment. In fact, so it wasn't him who got the kill on the OI. Okay, so we're changing position. It's a much better spot to fire from. A little more difficult to get a shot through on that Type 58, which, as you know, is the T-3485 from the Chinese state. Rounds out. No, just splashing him. Yes, the Type 58 is just, just their version of it. They just called it a different name. Same vehicle, though. Doesn't have quite as much punch with the 85mm. But we've got certainly got three tanks there. One who's got an 85mm gun and the two with 90mm guns. And that's definitely stunned him. It appears the enemy RT isn't making an attempt to counter battery. And I suspect that might be down to the fact they can't they haven't been able to work out where we are. Loaded. Trying to get a shell through the gap. Rounds out. Nope. It's one of the most difficult spots to fire at there. You can certainly stun the guy on the other side, but you can't really kill them. But he is only nine hit points now. And if they do land a shell near him, well, it might be possible. Fires another one in. And yes, he does get him this time. But it was only Splash. And just the other side is of Giro. And, oh. Well, the Giro just killed our P43 Biz. And now he's trying to block our guys from coming through that gap. Giro setting up the P43 Biz. If he's not careful, he'll be next. That was a good Splash. And now the enemy tanks here, the, uh, that's the Sherman Jumbo. We've also aimed onto the target. I think we might be far enough back to miss out on getting hit, but we think he's about there. Just reacquire him. Look through the bush. There he is. He's shooting across the valley, actually. Oh, he's taking fire. Now, if he decides to come in our direction, he's probably going to see the AMX-13 F3 first. We're not going to be able to kill him with one shot. But if he does come in our direction, we might be able to splash him. Oh, he did get a shot in there. Took him down to 106, and he fired a round back. Now, was that the AMX-13 F3? I think it might be. There's the kill. So now, four kills for Clone Trooper. And the enemy RT is definitely trying to get him. Three kills for the AMX 13 F3. So between them, seven kills. Now they're going on the move because... Yeah, oh dear, we just lost our Jackson. But just across the valley, we've got that T-3485M. Now, can we get a shot on him? We're probably within vision of that Jackson, or that T-34 rather. Both enemy arties are trying to take out our AMX 13F3. Probably would be a good idea for him to go north and park himself in a, in a way that he can actually get shots. In fact, he's decided to go behind the, the fences or the bushes and spot for us. So we're now getting ready to take out any enemy tank that comes up the side of the valley. Whilst the AMX 13 have three spots. Only three left on the enemy team. Both parties and the T-34. Here comes the T-34. Lines up the shot. No shot yet. 
going to have to wait until he gets close to the top. And I have the feeling that AMX 13 F3 wants to derp him as he comes over the rise. I think the AMX might be able to do it as well. He's backing up. The only problem is, of course, the enemy RT is going to have a pop at him. Oh, kill shot! Lovely one! He just took out the T-34, which now leaves both RTs left. The AMX-13 F3 did take a hit from one of the enemy RTs. So they both damage to some extent and of course nobody's been doing counter battery on the enemy RTs but I think they've now got a chance so they're going to cut straight away across the valley both RTs together the AMX 13 F3 is the faster of the two this one will do 56.3 the if I remember correctly the AMX 13 F3 is 60 kilometers now oh the enemy RT is one of them has turned up near our cap area and we've got a shot. We're not fully dialed in yet. I think he's aiming at our AMX. Oh! That was a direct hit. We saw the tracer. Now the bad news for the SU-8 is if that was a direct hit, it could be... Oh, well it is! Look! 59 hit points is all he's got. We're almost reloaded. Now, auto aim on. Just as he comes around the corner, he's going to try and shotgun us. Amex is coming up behind him. And... Hello, Mr. As <laughs> you wait. Well, he paid for that one. Yeah, with two RTs available, one of them could hold him and the other one could go around the corner and nail him. So now it's two versus one. They've managed to claw this one back. It was three versus two near the end, but of course the enemy was doing rather well. They were picking off our guys one by one. So both guys are now going over to the other side of the map. Now where is the AMX-13? Well, he's actually just slightly ahead of us. And they have platoon because they've both got at least three kills. Clone Trooper's got five. The other guy's got four. Din more forces is his name okay now whoever goes up top is going to get the spot one of them could actually hold back here but i think they're going to try and force the guy to come down here to them so they've hidden in the bushes he's hidden behind the rock now that's not a great position but it does force the guy to come down and find them and if, of course he finds one behind the rock the other one will nail him so I think they've got the game. They just need to play it cool. Even if the other guy doesn't come down, he's going to lose because they're going to cap out in 15 seconds time. And there's the two minute mark. I think they've got him because they, he's only got 10 seconds left. And it looks like he's not going to come down because he's left it too late. And they will cap out to win. And he's fine. He's got that in celebration and that is a victory for clone trooper and din min forces here's the end of battle stats and that was a first first class tanker for clone trooper c4 in the m44 i didn't get his full name in there but clone trooper is far close enough uh, of the asus clan well he managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills in fact he got five in this one one short of getting a top gun and one third of the enemy team if he had come down if that enemy rt had come down they might have stood a chance of getting a top gun or his teammate would have got five kills as well when it came to bruiser medal well he got 10 critical hits in that one so that's five more than he needed and of course he got the brothers in arms because he had at least three kills so did his platoon mate and they both won the game. So, well, they were both alive at the end of the game. His win eight was 2,535, which is Unicom standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the highest damage in the game turned out to be the Rudy on his own team, who got 2,093 hit points. Second highest damage, the AMX 12 ton, 
1445. And the third highest damage was the SU-8, the one they killed. Yes, he managed to get a Confederate at 1,317 hit points of damage. When it came to Clone Trooper, he got 1,222, but he was beaten by the Giro on the enemy team and also the uh, AMX 12 ton. So in actual fact, uh, he's in sixth place overall on damage. Our Din Min forces are platoon mates. He only got 889, but he did get four kills in the game. And he also got the Brothers in Arms as well. When it came to uh, uh, basics or number of kills, yes, we've got the highest number being Clone Trooper, C4, with five kills, four kills to Din Min forces, and also to the T3485M on the enemy team. Yes, he got sucker punched into going after the AMX-13 and left a clean kill for Clone Trooper uh, as the guy crept up trying to get closer to get a clean shot. And when it came to joint third place, we can actually say it's the Ridley on our own team who got two kills and the Skoda T25 and the M4A3E2 on their side as well with two kills apiece. When it came to base XP, yep, they got the win. AMX 13 F3 AM managed to get 869. 866 went to the Rudy. And in third place, we've got Clone Trooper C4 with 861. He fired 16 rounds, so it's a decent round. Um, yes, I did warn him about that uh, enemy being on counter battery. It, it was pretty obvious. The moment I saw a shot land near the AMX 13 F3 on the minimap, I realized. Yes, these guys are trying to counter battery. You could hear the rumble of the RT in the distance. And then obviously we saw the mark appear on the mini map showing that there was counter battery in progress. He should have moved after he fired, but he didn't. And as a consequence, he lost some hit points. Uh, he got 16 shots fired, six direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot and 11 splash. Damage of 1,222 hit points, of which 876 was at more than 300 meters. Now, who was the one he penetrated on this game? Well, I expect it to be a light tank of sorts. It's not the AMX 12 ton. Was it the SU-8? No, it wasn't him either. Now, was it the Staghound? Yes, it was the Staghound. He hit him for 306 hit points. One penetrating shot took him out of the game. Uh, yes, so at least we know who it was um, who he got the penetrating shot on. He also received one hit by way of splash. That was the counter battery. I did warn them, but as I said, you know, there was the indication they got to be hot on that. If you're an RT player, watch out for that. Hear that rumble in the distance, then it might be a shell aimed in your direction. Eight enemy vehicles were damaged, five were killed. He got 703 hit points of damage assist and 149 hit points of stun assist off five stuns. He also earned 47 capture points while he was sitting in the cap. And he earned 40,751 credits profit on a premium account and 3,229 experience points as well. So a very good game there from Clone Trooper C4 in the M44. But uh, we do have another replay for you to watch. Not the only one. Yes, I've been doing a lot of double replays recently. And we have another M44 game for you to have a look at. So let's have a look at it right now. The second replay is on the Sand River map, and the name of the commander is Hossballs! Yes, he's not always in a bishop, but sometimes he does play in other RT, and on this occasion, he's decided to use his M44 with two marks of excellence on the barrel. Top speed, as I said, is 56.3 kilometers an hour. 500 alpha, 39 millimeters of pen. The standard reload is 25.89. It used to be about 15 seconds with all the bells and whistles if you had all of the uh, BIA crew, the rammer and everything. But Wargaming have kind of ruined it by uh, neutering it, by making it a really long reload. Somebody's at home. Yep, they're knocking trees down as they go, giving us a good path to show where they are. So he fires around in just to say hello.
Now we can see that uh, despite it being 25.89 as the um, reload time, is it 25 point? It is 25.89. Yep. We can see that uh, Horseballs has got it down to 21.52. Oh, and he just got a direct hit. He's landed in a tier 8 game with tier 6, uh, tier 5 tanks. Is this tier 5? It is. No, it's tier 7 game with tier 5 in. And he just hit somebody on the enemy team. One of the high tier ones, I think. Rounds out in the KV. Oh, splashed him. Only eight hit points, though. One of the other good things about this RT that hasn't changed is the arc of fire. You've got 60 degrees arc, 30 degrees either side of the center line. And that makes a big difference because it means that you could accurately dial in very quickly with this gun because uh, if the gun pivots on its pivot mount, then it's not going to bloom the reticule by doing so unless you move the vehicle outside the arc. So if you stay inside the arc, you get a chance to get a hit. Oh, he's going to have a chance there. Oh, well, that was cheeky. The 25 TP stopped in his tracks. And I think he realized that if he did move a bit further forward, he'd get shot at. Well, the SMV CC56 just got a kill on the M4A1. As he was hiding behind the buildings. Now, we could probably splash, splash the 25 TP. Oh, but they're knocking down the buildings now, so we might as well go for it. Well, stunned him. Got some splash. Now, there's nobody defending the north area of the map at the moment. Those guys are going to be turning up at our cap area very shortly, I would say. Well, at least we've got a T-3485 M guarding that way, but it's only really two tanks because there's also a Panzer Fia Alcerol H. So our SU-122A ought to move away from where he is right now. That looks good shot. And it was because uh, the enemy went down the T-34 out the game. Yep, he spotted it. Hospitals in his usual way. He's in the aim mode. But he's actually driving his vehicle whilst doing it and getting a good 3D uh, all-round perspective, you could say. It doesn't... Not everybody can do this in, in the aim mode because it is a bit awkward. It's very difficult to try and do it and do it correctly. But the 122, well, I'm afraid he wiped out by the Panther on the enemy team. So, yes, that was kind of predictable. Meanwhile, we're getting quite a good uh, reposition here because it means now we might be able to shoot in to kill the enemy tanks behind the mosque. So he's found his position. What sort of angle has he got? Well, yes, he can actually get a shot in there, but it's only the front quarter of the vehicle. And the KV-1 just sitting there, rounds out. No, didn't get anything from that. I think it went too long. Looking back at our own cap area. Unfortunately, we just lost our IKV. But these guys are now going to make themselves easy targets. Oh, if we can see them. He fires one in. Gets a hit. Our Panzer Fiat Alcerol H is keeping these guys visible. And he's about to go down. That Panther. Just line it up. Oh, we've got a bit of reticule bloom there. He's decided instead to go after the T-3485M. Probably a better choice. Rounds out. And he got him. He got him. But the Panther's still alive. And our Panther Fiat Alcerol H is almost about to die. And he has gone down. We're almost loaded. One shot is all it takes. And that's it. So that's two kills now for Hospitals. Now, can he get some more? I'm pretty sure he can. He's got a very good firing position in this corner. 
It's quite an unusual one. You don't normally fire from this corner. But I think the, the beauty of it is that uh, from this angle, he can shoot some of the guys who think that they're safe, but they're not safe. In fact, it would work even better if he was to move a little further east. But we just spotted an enemy tank we could wipe out fairly easily. There's our nice horns just died. Now we go for the Stug. He's on the move. And he takes some splash. Now, he should have moved the aim slightly further forward to get um, uh, an advance on that enemy. A bit of a lead. And he would have driven straight into the shell. The good news is our Skoda T24 is actually spotting for us on that area. So he'll keep the guy spotted so whilst we can hit him. No sign. Come on. Get them in sight for us. Stug's got a very short view range. And he's just put, put uh, he's just uh, been spotted. And they're mocking him. They're saying, go for him. Sturmil took out the Polak. And we've lost sight of him now. <laughs> We can hit that guy. That's gone. That's the KV-3. We're two ahead of the enemy now. Now we can hit this Stug. Now let it settle. Let it settle. Don't chase the thing. Oh, well, he's gone. We're three ahead of the enemy now. All they've got left is a KV-2, a Hummel, a Fifi, and of course the last tank being a Super Hellcat. So still plenty of chance to get a Top Gun. Oh, there's the chaser from the enemy RT. Back at their cap area. You can see that um, Hospitals was slowly moving his aim by scrolling his mouse bit by bit. Again, it's much easier if you use the alt-click method, which is press down your control key, put the mouse over the minimap, and then right-click, and that will take you straight to the target. Well, the Hummel's gone. And that means now there's only three, so no chance of getting a top gun out of this. But he certainly could still get some hit points. There's our Skoda up near their cap area. The Super Hellcat's probably north of the riverbank. Last seen in that area. Of course, he has got a 19mm gun, so we really don't want to get hit by him. This RT does have fairly good health points, 315, but it would only take two shots from a 90mm gun to take us out. And in fact, oh, now the Super Hellcat's right back by his cap. You can see he's slowly scrolling his mouse over. Now, I think he does know about this method of holding the control key down and then right-clicking on the minimap, but he's just not using it at the moment. It's a very slow way of moving your aim, you see, by doing this. And in those few seconds it takes for you to do this, the enemy tank might get away, you see. T-150 is a one-shot for the Super Hellcat, I'm afraid. So if he does see him, it's going to have to be quick. Luckily, we've got the Tiger 1 coming in, and he is not a one-shot, but he just took a hit. And there's the um, Fifi. It was the Fifi who did it. Lined up, rounds out, and splashed him. 78 hit points. The Super Hellcat killed the Tiger 1. You can see that the T-150 is firing rounds on that target as well, but we've lost sight of him. Now the question is, where is that Super Hellcat? He's obviously using the bushes for cover. I think he might be slightly to the left of that area. He might be in one of those bushes where the trees are. And he's actually gone behind us. So he circled around to try and hit us. Now, can we get a hit? Yes, and a big hit. That was a penetrating shot. 535, high roll. Remember, 500 alpha. 
And now it's three versus two. Stuart Mill and the box tank are moving down. Stuart Mill's got more health, but the thing is very slow. So he's much more vulnerable to a super Hellcat. But it would take only one shot from either the box tank or the Stuart Mill to take them out. The only other vehicle, of course, is the Fifi, and he's very low on hit points now. He took a hit from the T-150, and he also took a hit from Hospitals. And they found him. Oh, and again, he's scrolling. Doesn't work. You have to do the other method or you're too slow. Fives around in. Misses. We've lost our box tank. Yes, he was taking his time to scroll, you see. And if you do that, then obviously it takes too long and you end up missing the target. But the Sturm uh, did get the kill on the Fifi. We've still got the problem of that Super Hellcat. Every time you scroll like that, it takes you, what, two or three seconds to advance the aim. Whereas if you go to the minimap and do it, it's in one second. Literally just one second to aim. And now we've lost the Sturm Mill. So now it's the Super Hellcat versus Hospitals in the M44. And I think Hospitals decided that he wants to ambush that Super Hellcat. He's not going to go in and try and hunt him down. The Super Hellcat does have the advantage of stealth. He can sit there in a bush, wait for the right moment. Whereas if Hospitals goes back to his cap area, I'm not so sure that the Super Hellcat will be able to make it to his cap in time to well he can't cap out now it's too late so it has to be no cap kill all for the super hellcat if he wants to get the win now the super hellcat is rather fast i must admit it's one of the faster tanks in fact it, the hellcat was the fastest armored vehicle during world war ii Oh, he's been spotted. He's still on the move. There's the Hellcat. He did make it over in time. But the question is, can we nail him? Remember, he's got a 90 millimeter. It'd only take him two shots to actually take us out. He's trying to get an angle on us. It'd only take us one shot to take out Super Hellcat if we get a pen. Now, is he going to try and drop down? There he is. I don't think he can drop down. He's thinking about it. It's going to be a draw if he doesn't. But if he comes down and tries to fight us on our own terms, he will lose because Hospitals is deadly with the shotgun. Okay, there he is. We can see him. He's trying to get around us. Limited time now. He's trying to get a long shot. He did it! Hospitals wins the game with a lovely shot. Wasn't that a great victory for Hospitals? Yes, uh, after all that struggling he did with the uh, aiming, I do hope he does try to, to use that upper method. It's so much quicker to dial in on target when you know exactly where they are. But he got him with the shotgun. Yes, Hospitals used his skill to take down that Super Hellcat. The Hellcat tried to get an accurate shot, but he just didn't dial in. And he probably knew that if he did try to dial in, Hospitals would have him before he could even get the shot out. It was an ace tanker game for Hospitals in the M44. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get 18. He also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win eight, 4,500 Super Unicum Standard. Let's have a look at the team scores and see where he was. Well, he actually didn't get the highest damage. The Super Hellcat got a high caliber and top gun for 2,535 hit points, but Hoskwals got the better of him in the end. 
Second highest damage was Hospitals with 1,862. And of course, he got the Confederate. And the third highest damage in this one, well, that actually went to the T3485M on the enemy team by just four hit points. The Tiger on our team managed 1,682 and the T34, 1,686. So they were very close in it there. When it came to kills, though, you can see the highest number was the Super Hellcat. He was a practice player, but he just wasn't up to Hospital standard. Six kills went to the Super Hellcat. Three kills went to Hospitals and also to the Tiger 1 on his team and the Stereo Mill. And two kills went to the Skoda T24, the T150, the T3045M on the enemy team and the Panther who stuck around stationary for way too much time after he killed that Panzer Fear Ausrung H. He should have moved on, but Hospitals nailed him all the same. And when it came to base XP, Hospitals comes out on top with 943. 933 went to the Skoda T24, 806 went to the Tiger 1. Was it an exciting battle at the end? Uh, it was very tense. I wondered how that Super Hellcat was going to do that. He wanted the long range shot so that he could dial it in, but he just couldn't do that. Not with an M44 pointed directly at him. He hoped that he would be able to outturn Hospitals, but no, Hospitals was turning the vehicle to get it lined up. And as soon as he was ready, as soon as the Super Hellcat stopped, he nailed him with a shot. Even though the Super Hellcat got the shot off first, in the duel of duels, it was Hospitals who got the victory. 21 shots fired, 7 direct hits, 1 penetrating shot, 15 splash. I think we did see the penetrator shot, and I don't think it was the Super Hellcat. Oh, it was! Actually, I'm wrong. It was the Super Hellcat that he nailed. Yep, he got a penetrator on him for 691 damage in total. I, I was wrong again. 15 splashes, 1,862 hit points of damage, of which 1,706 were at more than 300 meters. He damaged 11 of the enemy, killed three of them, did 303 hit points of damage assist, and 151 hit points of stun assist of 12 stuns. On a premium count, he, uh, on a free to play account rather, he actually earned a profit of 14,535 credits and he also got 1,886 experience points out of it. So yeah, what an exciting ending. Uh, almost as exciting as the game with uh, Clone Trooper um, in uh, on the province map. Yes, he had an interesting time as well, especially after he took some damage right at the start of the game. But he managed to pull off his victory and Hospitals managed to do the same in his game. I know some people have been asking for M44 Ace Tanker games. Um, we will try to do some because actually we're trying to encourage people to go back to the M44. It's still got it in some ways. The SU-8 is better at fire rate, but the M44 is still a very good RT to play. So um, we will be featuring a few more M44 games in the future um, just for the enjoyment of those people who actually do want them uh, so, to see how it's done. If you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.